Hi everyone, this is the introduction of Mamsa Com to Double Vibes, and in this lecture, I'll explain how you can actually define the user-defined primitive in the Verilog HDL. All right, you can see in the block diagram here I have used two user-defined primitives called as UDP one and UDP two, and the first UDP one is taking three inputs A, B, and C and producing the output W one. Similarly, the second UDP is taking the input D, E, F and producing the output W2. The relation between the input and output has been defined in the form of the truth table. So whenever you are having the information in terms of the truth table, you can also write code for it using the user defined primitive approach. Just like I'll do later on and I'll show you how we can do that. And we are having proof user-defined primitive and the output of this primitive is actually fed into an gate that is actually the AND gate which produce the output F. Okay, the relation between A, B, C and W1 is given right here and similarly D, E, F is given right here. For defining the user-defined primitive, you will uh, use the same approach. I have actually written the code for here. So let's say the first primitive is named as UDP. It is having the output W1 and the input ABC. Each primitive actually starts with the keyword primitive and you have actually instantiated with any name. Like I have instantiated it with the name UDP. In the primitive list, the output is always declared first and the inputs are declared in the same order in which your truth table variables are actually varying. Fine, here W1 is the output, so you have declared it as W1 and input is declared, uh, declared as ABC. Fine, then you use the reserve keyword table and end table for defining the given information. A, B, C are written without commas, okay, and then you, you use the colon for defining the output value for the given input combination. Similarly, you can see I have defined 0, 0, 1, comma, and then the output corresponding to this input combination. This is the first primitive and it will terminate with the end table and end primitive. Then I have written the Next primitive, which is actually UDB2, and its output was W2. Fine. So I have written W2 over here, and the inputs are written as DEF. Again, it will start with the keyword table and terminate with the reserve keyword and table. And finally, this primitive ends with the reserve keyword and primitive. Okay. Now the next step is to write down the very log module for this. You can see I have written the primitive and the module on the same very log module file. Okay, so module is named as the UDP1, and here you can see as indicated in the diagram. In this module, the W1 is actually the interconnection between the user defined primitive and the input of this AND gate, and similarly, W2 is the input of the this gate and it's the output of the UDP2. So basically these are the interconnecting wires. That's why I will declare them as wires in my module definition. Right here you can see I have mentioned them as wire W1 and W2. While the W is the output of this function, A, B, C, D, E and F are the inputs for this module. Okay. Okay, uh, so since this module has only one output, marked as W and the inputs are A, B, C, D and F. Six inputs are present it and two wires W1 and W2. Now let's just call the user defined primitive and uh, we know that W1 was the output of the first module operating on these three input variables. Similarly, W2 was the output of the second module, uh, second primitive using these three variables okay and finally output w is actually 
you can relate it using the two input wires w1 and w2 and i have instantiated with the name g1 and this is the definition of the module having multiple user defined primitives the next step is to actually check the behavioral syntax and you can see there is no error present if you will click on this simulate behavioral modeling you will get this window actually pops up and you will set its value by clicking on the force clock there you will write one the rising edge is one falling edge is zero and cancel after one nanosecond and the duty cycle of the waveform or input waveforms is actually 50 milliseconds i have done that all for all the input variables fine so when i will play it i can see these type of the waveforms will appear if i will click on zoom to fit fine so we can see right here when the inputs are uh, just a minute let me just set a little so here a b c d e f are the inputs and w is the output wire w1 and w2 are the interconnecting wires so when a is equal to 1 b is equal to 0 and c is equal to 0 similarly d f all are equal to 0 so let's go back to the table for verifying this when a is equal to just 1 and b and c are 0 so the output or of the first module is equal to 1 while d e f all are 0 the output is also equal to 1 in that case that's why the function is the end of these two modules and out should be equal to 1 so we can see w is equal to 1 in that case thank you for watching if you have more questions you can drop your questions in the comment section also like and subscribe to my channel love this